Yeah. Thanks for coming out, man. Up. I wake yeah, people up. I will never yeah. that. You know what's funny? People up. That's a superpower. You know what's that. funny? It's no, like, uh, so I, I hobby as a DJ, uh -huh. and I usually get like the closing, like the closing time slot. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, this is like you, Jane. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Save the best for last. <laughs> That's a good thing. Is Mauricia here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi, Mauricia. Oh, I didn't, uh, sorry, I, I hadn't met you personally, so I didn't know if you were here or not. But uh, we'll, um, we'll let this bustle uh, Thank you. Thank you. finish before we start. Can I just acknowledge you for something oh, while, sure. while that's happening? Um, I think we've all heard that line. Uh, if you want to know someone, look at their five closest friends. Um, yes. So I sat in a room. A gentleman was actually was in that room when I was on another panel just this past week. And I sat in the room. And this is not to knock the event in any way, but my soul died a little leaving wow. that room. I walked into this room today. I didn't know what to expect. What I do for a living is what lives and breathes in this room and the people that you surround yourself with. Mm. And it, it makes my heart dance to know that there are people like this in the world. Amen. Yes. 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 That's all we know. Yeah, truly, like you, to be that kind of light and magnet in the world mm -hmm. that brings this kind of people together, dude, that's magic. Thank yes. you, man. Thank you. I magic. appreciate that. And I really appreciate all you guys for coming out because uh, it's you guys doing all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the content of, of this scenario. So I'm very, very grateful. I mean, it's humbling even. Um, the level of, of, of success and, and the, the level uh, that everybody's been willing to open up about themselves and share. Um, it's not common, yeah, and I'm grateful for it. So thank you for that, and, and thank all of you guys. Uh, Elon and his brother have a, have a company, and, and I, the company slips my mind because Satori Prime. Yes, and we went through what that means. Yeah. And I love the explanation of this thing <laughs> is so much that yeah. I, can we start off yeah, with that? Yeah, we can start with that. Because that's kind, of, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so uh, Satori means a moment of sudden enlightenment. Mm. It's a name that I read in a book when I first, first started in personal development, and I loved it. And I actually had two, I was in finance for a long time. I had two hedge funds. They were both called Satori Capital and Satori Investments. When we started our business, we just kept going back because it was me and my brother. Our last name's Ferdman. So I was like, coaching with Ferdmans? That sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we weren't blessed with one of those great last names. Uh, and then like Elon and Guy were going to be hard to say. So we kept going back to Satori, but we wanted something else with it. And so we had just watched the movie Transformers. <laughs> and uh, we had grown up <laughs> loving Optimus <laughs> Prime. <laughs> Yeah, and all of a sudden, you know, superhero this stuff, isn't right? the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> so we just said it together. I was like, Satori Prime. I was like, wow, that's got a really cool ring to it. <laughs> so we went with it. I love and, that. And Prime, in my mind, was like, Prime means the best, the best. number one, right? One, right? Yeah. So we're doing a training, like three, four months after this. Someone asked, what is what does your company name mean? And I was like, Satori means a moment of sudden enlightenment. And Prime, you know what? I've actually never looked it up. So I go to Google, definition, prime. A moment of greatest success, success, vigor, or uh, a moment of greatest success, financial success, or vigor in one's life. Wow. In that and I'm literally reading this, and I'm going, how is that? You did that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a big enough name to live up to. So yeah. Fantastic. I love the name. And then, yeah. then let's go into a little bit. I mean. Obviously, when, when you say you wake people up, yeah, uh, um, and that is your superpower, yeah. Let's let's talk about that. A little bit. Yeah. So it's been so awesome. This is why I said this room is just absolutely so awesome. I work specifically with financially successful people, who, like many of you, have gone out to fill voids internally with external shit, and then they wake up one day and they go, wait. That's not what it's about. It's about fulfillment. It's about joy. It's about finding inner peace. It's about creating alignment. And so I was sitting here and just listening to all your stories of how you got to that place. 
that's what I want to give the world. So when I say wake people up, it's see behind this cultural veil. We live in New York City, or most of us, I think, live in this area. This is a really difficult conversation to be around all the time. You have to be doing stuff to move forward, to walk outside and feel good about yourself. Because if you're not going to do it, that guy's going to do it, or that girl's going to do it. And you constantly feel like you're being left behind, and then you go home, and you drown your sorrows in sex or food or alcohol or something, and you wake up the next day and you do it again. That's not the world I want my kids to grow up in. I don't. I think there's so much more to life. When you shared about, Michael, right? Yeah. When you shared about sitting and watching that sunset and going like, wow, I'm the happiest I've been. I didn't achieve anything. I didn't do it. I just sat here and I'm happy. And from that state, magic occurs. When people live in that state of peace and fulfillment and alignment, that's when all this stuff happens. Like the greatest things that have happened in your life have all come not because you sat there and you busted your ass and you thought like, I'm going to do this. It was this, every one of you has this amazing story. And this person showed up miraculously into my life. <laughs> or that I walked into this room and this person said yes. And that's how it happens. But then we meddle and we force and we try to manipulate outcomes and we feel drained. So and so, what are, what are a few of the processes that you yeah. take uh, some of your 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 um, your students through? Yeah. So do we, you call them students? I'm sorry. No, just clients or friends or family. <laughs> family. Family. <laughs> I like that. So we deal a lot with a few things. Um, I've been trained heavily in language, so language and its effects on human beings. Uh, I studied a lot of NLP and neuroscience and more recently in Michelle's world, energy and alignment and feeling in the body and things like that. So real quick, I'll just say a couple of things that I heard even in this room that I'd love to offer you guys. Desiree, you brought up, I loved the distinction between surviving is victim. So I was actually writing, you guys gave me so many good ideas by the way. <laughs> uh, I was writing and I wrote, Surviving equals victim. Overcoming equals force. So if you think about it, if you have to overcome something, then incessant in that word is like, this is a challenge, right? Like, mm -hmm. I have to do something to move this out of my life. So if we were being a little more accurate, we could say that allowing or surrendering, life is constantly happening. Stuff is always happening, mm -hmm. right? But in allowing for we receive peace. We allow that. You know, you guys, a lot of you spoke about forgiveness and things like that. So that's some of the stuff that, that we work with people on is how do you get to that state where life is happening for you and you have this vision that every single thing that happens is perfectly happening for your existence. Perfectly. There's no more resistance. There's no more manipulating. There's no more, I have to shift this and make this and do that. You're in constant and perfect alignment. Energy. Everything in the world is temporal. Yes? yes. It never rains forever. You're never sad forever. You're never happy forever. You're never successful forever. Everyone shared amazing stories of ups and downs, right? Life would be fucking boring if it wasn't that way. It'd be like watching a happy-go-lucky movie all the time. The brain wouldn't, it just wouldn't happen. It'd be like, I gotta, I gotta do some, something to mess something up so that I can deal with something. <laughs> so, this is a true part of psychology. Yeah. This is, this is actual psychology. A absolutely. People go into what's called, uh, what is it called? The cycle of violence. Yeah. There's a where, cycle of everything. Right. Cy and, and where they, they literally, they're bored with their life. So they go pick on their wife or they go, you know, yeah. start a fight yeah. or you oh know, some, yeah. some kind of thing. Yeah. And so what you're talking about, I mean, it's, there's, a act, there's actual studies on this. Yeah. I'll um, take it even a step further. Sure. You know, think about this for a second. You have a script of who you operate in life as. And you walk out to everyone you know, 
and you literally hand them the script so that they can play certain roles in your life. And who is, oh, I think Chris, you were mentioning. Yeah. Create, you create your situation. Every, every uh, boss, yeah. my dad. Here you go, here's the script. This is how I need you to respond to me. Yeah. And then we get all pissed. You're the common denominator in all of it, right? You want people to shift. It's not about them changing. It's when you make the shifts internally, your outside completely shifts. Look, go like this for a second. It doesn't matter. Push with one hand, push with your right hand and push harder. What does your left hand automatically do? Push it back. Let go of the hand. This is what happens to people when you give up resistance. And that's what I mean when you, when we're overcoming, even though that is definitely a step up from surviving, I agree 100%. When we're overcoming, we're in this state. What does an overcomer need? Challenge. Constant challenges. Constant challenges. What if you are no longer an overcomer? See, one of the things that I've learned is that and by the way, none of this is true. This is just <laughs> shit that I learned. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is all on a weird Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, listen, it's all ever evolving, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm constantly putting myself in an inquiry of asking what is true for me at this moment. And I've started to understand that the things that make you the most successful in any area of your life are also paralyzing you in other areas of life. So, for example, you had shared about work ethic, mm -hmm. right? Like being a super, super hard worker. Amazing. I grew up believing that I was a loser and I was bad. I'm sure even without telling you my life story, you could probably imagine what my life looked like with a story like I'm a loser. Overachiever, having to be good at everything. If I wasn't good at something immediately, then I would drop it. I would destroy anyone in my path in order to win. Friends, family included. I produced amazing results in my life, you get that? I destroyed people's lives. You get that too? Your greatest asset in inquiry will also show itself to be your greatest weakness. Working really hard is a story that we all got sold and bought. The most successful people I know don't work hard. Yeah, that's right. They don't work hard. So I grew up as an immigrant. Every, anyone ever see that movie in America? Yeah. Anybody? It's about an Irish family. They moved to the city. There's this beautiful scene where, like, the dad and the son are carrying a, a, a like, in AC unit in window. I did that. I did. I, I was crying watching this movie. Like that. That was my life. We grew up on four hundred dollars a week. My parents worked two jobs each. The only way I knew you could achieve success is bust your ass. <laughs> so when we started our business, I worked sixteen-hour days for seven days a week. I stopped working out. I didn't pay attention to my wife or my kids. That's a travesty. That's a travesty. The game never ends. People I work with make millions. You know what they want? More millions. Yeah. Ask them about their kids. Haven't seen them in the last six years. Yeah. What about your wife? Who? Who? <laughs> Someone told me when the hearse comes, there's no U-Haul coming with it. Oh, right. Well, can I? Isn't that a choice? I'm. Just, I had to. Do yeah. That. Choice what? With what you just said. Absolutely. Me. Okay. Absolutely. Like, choice. Choice. What I'm saying is, we get so revved up in this cultural conversation about making something of yourself. Oh, right. Yeah. And then you buy all this shit, right. mm. not physical stuff, you do that too, but like you buy all these conversations mm -hmm. and then you wake up one day and you go, what am I doing? 
By the way, that's my best clients. So, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, like they have everything. The house, the second wife, the other set of children, the <laughs> these cars. Because the, the first one, they thought if they left that one, they'll still be happy. If they're not happy, I'll get another one. <laughs> she doesn't make me happy either. And we just like run and run and run. And life just flies by. And then you wake up, eventually, hopefully, at some point in your life, you know, like you did Tony Robbins. It took you going to India to have that awakening. Now you get to live the rest of your life in that state. Where you get to wake up every morning and just look at life and go like, wow, I'm really blessed and I'm really happy. And doesn't that make other stuff work that much better? Like your relationship with your kids and your wife and your business and you know, I, one of my things is like I grew up same thing, like working so hard. <clears throat> like, oh I had to make money, I had to support my parents. All I did was work 15, 16, 17 hour days. I'm like, okay, that's what it takes. They said, actually, I was talking to somebody that goes to India a lot that's super sick. So, I mean, he makes like 100 million a year. And he's like, the worst thing that ever could have happened to you is you were successful by doing the wrong thing. Exactly. And so many of us are in that state. So good. That's a great line. Being successful by doing the, right, the wrong thing. And we do that all the time. Because as a child, you grow up, if something works, that becomes the program. Mm -hmm. Period. The brain goes, ooh, we do that, keep doing that. Here's the problem, you become a hammer. And to a hammer, everything's gotta be a nail. Ask a hammer to make you a salad. That's gonna be a shitty salad. <laughs> so it's like, I would just offer to be in an inquiry about what are my greatest strengths? What are the things that I lean to on autopilot to create results? They've worked. And so you've done them over and over and over. If you really want to get to like a whole other level of abundance and love and fulfillment and peace, those strong suits that got you there are not going to be the things that create that. Right. Fantastic. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to give you the simplest answer ever. And this is just a practice that I started. If anything in my life feels forced mm -hmm. or manipulated, yes. mm. it leaves. It yeah. 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 And, and let me explain why. You, I know, because you said it, you believe in God. That is so Right? Very much so. Yeah, me too. It took me, by the way, 15 years of personal development to be able to say God. I would call it energy, universe, this, that, all this other stuff. God. Because that feels good to me. God. I don't know what it means, but to me it feels good. Every time you're forcing an outcome, resisting an outcome, manipulating an outcome, you are in, you're against God, energy. When God flows into your life, is it effort? It's that no, it's effortless. Effortless. Yep, effortless. effortless. Mm -hmm. So, God energy, divine light, divine love is here around you all the time. You are either in that frequency and alignment or you are not in that frequency and alignment. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very easy. We live in New York City. To get out of that alignment. <laughs> New York, you walk out and that cab just comes a little too close, you're like, ah, my cat. New, <laughs> New York minute. Yeah. So what I started practicing, and again, it's it's about catching it and then having a choice. You know, at first when I started doing this, I would force and manipulate outcomes for a long time. And I'd be like, God, why am I so drained? Why does this feel oh I'm done with that. Now it's like, you know, when you're really in alignment, and this is what we work with people, the out of balance, you feel so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does yeah. Do. You feel yeah. so fast. Yeah. And then you're not interested in out of balance anymore. Right. So you create all these, and, and these are completely unique to every individual, you create ways by which you can regain your alignment and balance. And from that state, I wholly believe that the state, like a human state condition, is magic. The thing we call magic 
I believe that is our God-given right. We live in that state all the time. Magic. Your normal. So like even when you were asking the question, right? I know I want to know that things are like people are sometimes this and, and I want to believe and then that's the stuff that's happening, right? Chris talked about it. Inner critic, heart, inner critic, heart, heart, God, inner critic, mind, ego. And it's just that game. Who's living your life at any given moment? And the more you live from here, woo wee. Oh, it's man. good. Yes. It is yes. good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, because we're like, yeah, overtime. sorry, like, like overtime, overtime. I don't mind. Anyway, big round of applause. Yeah. <laughs>